Hello, everyone. I am so excited to be able to bring a special guest to you today. This is my friend Katie, Catherine Fair. She hello. Is, hello, she's a licensed clinical social worker. She is also an intuitive coach and Reiki master. Katie's awesome, and I've known her for years, and she's been on this incredible journey, and I'm so excited to talk to you today, Katie. Awesome. Yeah, me too. Awesome. So I was asking you for your titles, and you were telling me, but you're saying you're really like a listener. <laughs> yeah, I think just like to help people figure out where they're going and what they need and be there to help them on their path. Like, I'm not, I can't do it for them, right? So um, just really there to assist. I love that. So one of the things, one of the reasons I ha asked you to have this conversation is exactly that. Like, I've... I've had my own journey that's been happening over the last few years and really grown and developed and done a lot of emotional work, done a lot of healing work over the last few years. Yeah. And as I've done that, of course, I've been talking to more and more women who are going through similar things, who are having similar struggles and aren't sure what to do about it. Because yeah. what I'm finding in my own experience and what I'm finding for other women is we talk about resources being out there, but they're not as easily accessible as many would think. And having a safe person to talk to about really hard things is not as easy to find as many would think that it is. So I'm so glad that you've opened yourself up so that I can ask you some questions that apply to a lot of the people that I've been talking to and that just a need that we're really seeing to be able to help people on this path of healing. Like you said, you can't do it for them. I can't do it for them. So it's all about empowering them to move forward um, through these hard things. Well, and I want to say too that as you described your path, I've been on that path. I still am. Like I still am like constantly trying to figure myself out and it's just at a different level, every, you know, with every step I take. So yeah. Um, One of the great things I know you explained to me is like, it's all, it's all a spiral, right? Like we're going to come back to yes. the lessons at different levels. Like you just said at a different level. Right. And we're going to see them at a, from a different point of view. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. that. So one of the things that I see come up and we hear the word come up a lot is trauma. And we know that trauma comes in all forms. People feel all different ways about it. Um, what would you, how would you describe trauma? Well, an adverse event, something that's happened to somebody that feels traumatic. Um, you know, I can't define for somebody what their trauma is. They have to define it. Um, so what's traumatic for you might not be traumatic for me. But then there's those things, right, that are traumatic. Um, and, and then what often happens is that things happen in the world and we relive it or we get triggered. And so, and we don't even know, right? We don't always know um, why we're being triggered by it or what have you. But it, I mean, it can go all the way back to childhood stuff. Mm -hmm. um, or it could be something that happened last week. Um, car accidents, rapes, um, just, you know, invasion of privacy, invasion of boundaries, uh, emotional, verbal abuse. Um, spiritual there's I mean I think people have spiritual traumas you know um and uh but it can be just I mean I turned 50 this year I it wasn't traumatic for me but it could have been you know um or it could be for somebody you know um so everybody gets to define what their experience is and that's an important piece. Yeah, that's super important. And I feel like mm -hmm. we could dive into any one of those subjects that you just talked about would be like its own pathway. Yeah. Well, and there's so many more, right? I mean, there's right. historical trauma. There's a trauma, there's traumas that our families, our, our ancestors have experienced. I mean, we're, we're looking at Black Americans right now and the trauma that they, they're experiencing and re-experiencing because of things that have happened in the past. COVID is a trauma. I mean, that's gonna be something we're gonna be dealing with for years. Um, 
So, and there's fear and grief uh, in the air. I mean, as a globe, we're dealing with this. And so those things that are happening in the world today are triggering for people the things that have happened in their past. Mm. And so, um, and it's, it's real. Yeah. So, so what would you say, um, you know, for women who are, who are going through that, what tends to come up? Like if, if we have had these issues of trauma in the past, maybe repeatedly, right? There are many things you're mentioning COVID. I mean, that's affecting everyone, right? And bringing up stuff from the past. How, how do you see these things coming up in our life? Like let's assume everyone has trauma or people have trauma. How are we seeing that show up? Oh, I mean, there's a range of things. I mean, as women, I, th I don't think that we're taught that we have a voice, that we have a right to speak a voice, our voice. I don't think we're taught that it's okay to ask for help. We should just kind of move through it, struggle, you know, like stand tall, you know, like don't ask for help, right? So yeah. it can take a lot. Yeah, it can take a lot like to, to finally, I honestly, maybe it takes hitting bottom and being miserable enough. Unfortunately, we have to get to a pretty miserable and uncomfortable place before we reach for help. So, I mean, it can look, I mean, it's a spectrum, right? So women who are brought up that it's okay to ask for help and maybe they're seeking therapy, maybe they're doing their self care and it's hard right now, but they're still plugging through and, and they're reaching out to their friends or to their support groups. And then the other end of the spectrum is the person who just is isolated and feels like they can't ask for that help. And maybe they're moving towards suicidal thoughts or self-harm. Um, you know, anxiety is worrying about the future. Depression is worrying and uh, focusing on the past. And, um, and then there's those of us who have both. Yeah. Um, and they're real things, even though nobody can can touch them or see them. Um, and then I think as women, maybe we have this tendency to justify, right? Like, well, it's not bad enough. I have women who show up and say, I'm sorry for bothering you. Don't apologize for bothering me. Like, that's why I'm here. Like, come in, you know, let's talk about it. Let's look at it. Let's unpack it. Um, and it's good that you showed up, but so many women, apologize and we apologize too much men men don't apologize they don't pay attention because they don't so we need to stop apologizing for asking for help and honor it and just know we deserve to ask for help yeah. it's a strength yeah I think as women too one I mean I'd love your opinion on this but I see that women are meant to be connected. Like we're supposed to be working together and stuff, but that our society has not set that up, that we are very isolated in, in our families, in our roles as, as mothers and wives, um, and not having that collaboration, that group support without going and now seeking it out, which I think a lot of people yeah. aren't necessarily able to do or wanting to do or any of those things. Well, a couple of things come to mind when you bring that up is that one research has shown that women spending time together decreases our blood pressure. And so right there, right? Healing the body, bringing the blood pressure down. Um, the other thing is I think women are rising. Women are coming together and we are going to be strong together. And um, so for women who are isolated and are not finding other women, I totally encourage you to come out, you know, and, and find other women because, um, we all want to be together and to, and, and to be in community. Um, I think the other thing too, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I, you know, I'm a therapist, I'm a coach, I'm a daughter, I'm all, I'm a friend, I'm all these things, right? I'm a healer. Um, one of the things I've just learned in the last couple of years is that and maybe, maybe a couple years is too much. Maybe it's more a year and a half um, that I come first. 
I'm responsible to take care of my soul. I heard Elizabeth Gilbert say this on a podcast. I'm responsible for my soul and it is taking me this long to figure out how to work it and how to use it. I'm not responsible for your soul. I'm not responsible for my husband's soul. I'm responsible for mine and I come first. And I started putting myself first a couple of years, a year and a half ago, probably. And it's made a huge difference. And people look at me like I'm crazy when I tell them this. But when I do that, I have so much more energy to give to my husband and to my kids and to my, my community. Um, and I, I give myself the best part of me. And then I have instead of the crumbs, right? Like we give ourselves the crumbs and yeah. we need to stop doing that. Yeah. So there's such a stigma, right? Of like women, if you take that time or if you're not putting everyone else ahead of you and your needs, then somehow you're selfish. But like you're saying, right. we take care of ourselves. We give better. We give more. We're, we're showing up the way that we yeah. want to show up for our family, for our friends, for our careers. I think that that is historical trauma for women, that idea that we're being selfish. Um, I think that's the way society used to be. It's no more. Right. Thank you. Oh, yes. I think so many of us need to hear that. Like, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay to take care of your needs. It's not just okay. It's, it's imperative. Yes. Yeah. Crucial. Yes. So for women who are, who are ready to step out, like you said, maybe it's rock bottom or it's just coming to a point where they're, they're just not, they're realizing that something has to change. Something has to shift. This healing needs to begin at some level. What would you say uh, ready looks like? How do you get ready for something like that? Well, I mean, I, again, I think that's different for everybody. I think it is some, uh, oftentimes it happens in crisis um, because they're just, they don't know what else to do, right? So often people show up to therapy in crisis. But I think also it's just a place of I've done, I've done this work and now I want to challenge myself. And so I want to move to the next level. Um, you know, I've done a lot of therapy. When I was seeing a therapist for several years, and I, it just started to feel like conversation, not challenging me. Um, and I, it just was like as sad as it was because I love, I love her. Um, you know, I mean, she's been a huge part in my healing journey. Um, but we both agreed it was time for me to stop seeing her and move on to somebody else. And so I did move on and challenge myself to some deeper. Um, deeper healing work, right? And so I think, and that's gonna look different for everybody. Um, you know, I've done, I think body work is really important. I, you know, and for some people who aren't ready to dig in up here, it could be just doing some body work right now. It could be going out, getting yourself out every day for a 30 minute walk. That could, that might be what it is. Um, and and start really taking care of you it could be um reaching out to your spiritual community it could be finding a therapist um or a coach or doing reiki or craniosacral i mean it could be going and floating in a flotation tank i mean there's so many different ways um eating healthy drinking water um i think I have a, a one uh, client I'm working with who said, I'm just going to make my bed every day. Great. Yeah. Let's start there. So you start where you're at, start where you're at. And, and it's just going to be taking small steps. Um, but it can be helpful to have a therapist who can really help you figure out what is going on and what is it that you, um, that you want to, look at and why are you in this place right now because uh, we can figure it out on our own i mean i really don't think we can yeah so you're you are a therapist you are a a coach so mm -hmm. what would it um if someone's looking at these options and looking at all the ways that they can get started on their path what would be some of the first steps in deciding 
you know, coaching or therapy, or just what are the, some of the first steps that someone would take to say, I'm going to start putting me for, you already mentioned so many of them going for a walk yeah. or just, you know, daily habits, or it can be bigger like body work. Um, but what would be someone's like first steps in deciding, I guess? Well, first I want to say like, you know, not, we can't separate the body work from the emotional work because they are connected. So our, you know, our emotional stuff creates our body stuff. Mm -hmm. So we have to do both. Um, and I tell all my clients that, and right now, because everything is telehealth, um, I, you know, in the past I could offer Reiki to a therapy client in addition, you know, we could do both mm -hmm. right now. And, and I do have tools to do body work, telehealth, absolutely. But I also don't believe that my way is the only way, right? Like what I have to offer is the only thing. So if there's something that really resonates with you on a body level, go for that, right? If you love to go get massages, you know, once or twice a month or more, Go do that, right? And do it in conjunction with the emotional and mental health work you're doing. Um, because you can't just do one or the other. You have to do both. That's, um, that's a huge nugget right there. <laughs> well, because we store this stuff in our body. Mm -hmm. We tuck it away and the body can only hold so much. So then the body says, enough. And then you have pain in your shoulder or your knee starts hurting, or you have back pain because you're carrying all of the stuff in the world, um, right? I mean, so, you know, look up Louise Hay, look up Carolyn Miss, you know, who wrote uh, Anatomy of the Spirit. Like, those are your tools for if you want to see the connection between the two, right there. So, um, but, so therapy, I see as being, um, you know, it's therapy is, I mean, I want to say like, it's looking at the past, the present and the future. It's looking at the whole person. It's looking, not that coaching isn't, but um, coaching doesn't delve into the past. Coaching isn't for somebody, maybe that's the place to start. Coaching isn't for somebody who's in a tremendous amount of emotional pain, right? Um, and isn't sure where they want to go. Um, Coaching, you know, therapy, I, I do go into the past. I do delve back into the childhood because honestly, if there's something triggering you today, we can talk about your partner. We can talk about this trauma that happened a month ago, but we really need to go back and unpack what happened first. Where did it begin? And often for most of us, that narrative began when we were a kid and, and now it's keeping us stuck today. So we don't necessarily have to spend like years in the past, but we do have to spend some time there. So um, coaching though is not that, is we're not, I, we will visit, we will spend a small amount of time there so that I can understand your narrative and understand where you're coming from, but we're not going to live there we are going to be forward thinking. What are your goals? What are you looking to do? It involves homework. It involves work. Uh, therapy is work too. Going to therapy once a week isn't going to change anything. You're going to have to do work. Um, but it's different. Um, I don't know. Does that, does that explain Yeah. That? I think, so as I'm understanding it, like therapy is going to really like dive in. And especially, I think it's important you mentioned for someone in crisis, for someone who's mm -hmm. going through like a really intense emotional time you're going to need to turn to a therapist someone who's really able to dive into all those areas with you and look at the whole picture of how you got to where you are and what to yeah. look for. where a coach is like hey i'm trying to get to this goal i'm trying to get to this next level help me help me work through that process is that kind of right yeah but i also want to say like i go to a therapist who happens to also be a coach right. so you know there's weeks when i when we're talking and i've been going every week now because of all the stuff going on in the world mm -hmm. i knew i needed more support right now so that i can be available to others right like if my cup isn't full i have nothing to pour from so but there's a way in which having her as a therapist and a coach um, 
is cool because the weeks I need to delve into the past, I can, and the weeks that I just need that coaching, um, that's what that's what she does. So, because I'm both, I tend to have both in me. Like I will present as both, even as a therapist. So, um, I think it's important that something you just mentioned of kind of being proactive with it. It doesn't have to be crisis mode. It doesn't have to be hitting rock bottom to seek out these things that no. you're saying that you're saying, you know, and for all of us, let's, Oh no, don't wait until you're in crisis. Let's not wait until, you know, kind of going back to how women think of like, it's not bad enough. It's not, it's not so awful that I can't make it through. We don't need to get to that extreme situation. We can just make sure that we're supported for life for all the things that we need yeah. to do. True. That's really important. Yeah. Um, how long does it take? What's the process? Some, some people like, like we kind of see it as a lifelong journey, but someone who's new and maybe is, is battling those stigmas of therapy and some of those old ideas about therapy, how long does it take essentially to like be cured or be healed or any of those things? Yeah. Well, it's different for everybody and it depends on how much work you put in. Yeah. And I would say that, you know, if you come in and you're, and you're diving in and you're really unpacking this stuff and then you're leaving and you're doing your work and you're, you're pushing yourself, you know, it's not easy. It's not easy. And first of all, it's very, it sucks. Let's just be honest, right? Doing this work sucks. And, but the payoff at the other end is worth it. You just have to go through that tunnel. Don't sit in the tunnel. Don't stand at the beginning of the tunnel. Take the step in and start moving. And you will start feeling the difference. And so, you know, I think that clients who come and they're really unpacking this stuff and they're sitting with their pain and they're going for walks, they're drinking their water, they're doing meditation, they're doing their breathing exercises, they're getting their massages, whatever it is, right? Like it's different for everybody. Yes. Within a matter of a few weeks, I can see a difference in somebody's mood, somebody's level of, they don't look like they're in crisis anymore. They're starting to feel better. There's, there's more hope. It can be a matter of a week, weeks. Um, so I think that um, that doesn't mean that it's over, right? And it, it's kind of like, I, I've, I've heard people describe it kind of like a roller coaster. And so, you know, you're like going up here initially. It doesn't mean you're not going to hit those peaks again. But yeah. if you continue to do the work every time you hit the peaks, you're not going to be as high. They're not going to be as crisis level right they're not going to feel as bad um but it's, not it's important low. to know it's not a straight line it's yeah. you know and it is that spiral mm -hmm. i've been doing this for years but now when i move into a place where i feel triggered i know what it's about yeah. i'm aware i know and i know what to do i know what to do i know what my tools are i know where to go I know I need to get up and go for a walk or I need to use my oils um, or I need to go talk to somebody, right? Like I know what I need to do. I think that's so important that there's not some like end goal where like, you're good, you're, you're clear, everything's cleared up forever. Like it's always, it's a process and it's always going to keep coming back, but you well, know, I believe you're empowered in how you handle it. Yeah. You're not scared when it comes up or feeling like a victim of something that's coming for you, you're able to identify and have tools to move forward. Right. Well, I was saying earlier, like I'm responsible for this soul. What I also know is that I'm here as a soul. I'm supposed to be learning things. Right. And if I learn it, the lessons stop coming at that level. But then I reach out, then I go to a new level of lesson, right? Oh, like, oh. um, <laughs> But I'm more equipped and I'm more aware. And then I move to this place of, yeah, bring it on. Like I can do this, right? Like I'm excited now to mm -hmm. learn what I'm supposed to be learning. Yeah. Where before it was like, oh, not again. 
Like, why do I keep moving into this? Well, I'm not a victim. Like, I do this to myself. And so I'm going to own it and I'm going to, and I'm going to unpack it and I'm going to figure it out. I love that. What are some of your favorite tools? You've mentioned, um, you've mentioned a few different kinds of body work. You've mentioned flotation. Tell me some of your and oils, of course, you know, I love oils. They've saved me. So what are some of your yeah. favorite tools that people can use um, in conjunction with therapy or coaching or as they're taking these first steps on their own? Well, the thing that keeps popping into my head, so I'll say this first, is that um, people should check out the documentary Heal, um, H-E-A-L. Um, so it really does encompass what we're talking about here, this idea of the body and the mind and the spirit, right? This, and so, um, and just, and that documentary will name so many tools. So um, like the tapping, right? I don't do a lot of tapping. I did learn about it and want to, I want to practice it more. Um, and, you know, some people like the um, EMDR. Again, not something I practice, but what is EMDR? Um, rapid eye movement. So it's just the idea. So it's bilateral movement, and the idea that it really can help some people with trauma. So some people who are really struggling with a trauma response and PTSD have found EMDR to be really, really helpful. Um, and so you know, I've experienced it purposefully so that I can know what it was like. Yeah. And it can, I, you know, I do think it can be really helpful. Um, I'm a Reiki master, so I believe in energy work and just moving. We carry energy and I practice my own self Reiki every day. Um, and I seek my own Reiki treatments. Actually, I've been thinking it's time I need to go do that. Um, I rebound on a trampoline. I feel like Reiki, I just want to vouch for Reiki, like you doing it or anyone who's like really good at it, it can do a, it can really help you shift quickly. Like you can, yes. in one session, you can really open up some stuff and like feel, um, feel more calm or feel more able to move forward. Like in one session, you can really, someone can help you so much with that energy work. Yeah, and the nice thing about Reiki is that, um, one, you, you can have it done distance work, so you, um, you don't have to be in the same room with the person. Um, two, it can be done with touch or without. So if you're somebody who's just not ready to dive into a body work that involves touch, um, then Reiki is an option. And Reiki can also involve touch, right? As a society, and even with COVID, we're not getting enough touch. Uh, we weren't getting enough touch before COVID, and we're certainly not getting enough now. So um, there are massage therapists practicing right now um, in many states, uh, including New Mexico. So, um, and then like, I've also done flotation therapy. I've floated in a flotation tank, and that's another great option. Um, for people who just don't want to be touched, right? Because you can just go float in a tank full of Epsom salts. And an hour in a flotation tank equals a whole eight hour night's sleep. So wow. go catch up and yeah. that energy out. So, and not all energy needs to be moved out, you know, some energy needs to be incorporated and balanced. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Um, the oils, absolutely. I use the oils all the time. They're my daily practice. They carry energy. I was talking to somebody the other day about how oils are so, in, it's so interesting. If you, if, you know, I talked earlier about Louise Hay or Carolyn Mist who talk about the emotional and the body piece. So if we take something like, um, you know, uh, arthritis, uh, for instance, and we look at what Louise Hay says about arthritis. And then we then look up for arthritis, what the oils are. And then we take the emotional, you know, I have this book right here with me, but like the emotional piece, right, for the oils, it all comes full circle, right? Like, so I think that keeping in mind again that there is an emotional connection to our physical ailments, our physical pain. Um, they are absolutely connected and we have to like i have to look at both yeah i love that the oils are kind of an easy um e easy way to open the door for people to both of those 
you know, like physical, the physical. Easy, art. but hard too, right? Like when I started using oils, it opened the door, right? So know that, right? Like as you start to use the oils, it is opening a door and um, don't shut it again. Like find your resources, find your community to help you. Like arthritis, going back to that example, that's, I mean, I talk to people about um, you know, deep blue or something, right? Like a, a pain oil. But then a lot of times what I see, and I know it happened to you and it happened to me, when you start reaching for oils for these physical ailments, they start working on that emotional level. And like you're saying, it like cracks it open and um, keep going. Like, like you're yeah. saying, keep going, take the next step. Don't shut it up again. Don't say, you know, these are too much. This is a beautiful invitation to walk through the tunnel. <laughs> walk yeah. Way yeah. Through what's on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I want, so we want to ask, you know, anyone who's watching what you are, what you're really going through, what do you want to know more about? Because this is just such a brief, just barely skimming the surface of Katie's knowledge, what she has to offer and the needs that we're seeing across all, all communities, women everywhere, these needs that we're seeing that are really arising, especially right now, especially when, like Katie's saying, there's fear, there's grief, there's stress, it's in the air. So how can we support you in moving forward and feeling confident in um, not being bogged down by stress or anxiety or depression or any of these things? There's so many tools available. So we want to know, what are you looking for? What do you need help with? And how can we help guide guide you and support you or connect you with resources that are going to help you along that path. So we would love to hear your input there. And for anyone who is, you know, hearing Katie and you're like, yes, like this is, this is what I've been looking for. Like she's saying all, she's saying all the things that I've been needing to hear. Katie is an, we've mentioned an incredible therapist. She's also a Reiki master. She's also an intuitive coach. So Katie, I know you just launched your website, right? And you're ready to, yeah. Well, can you tell us your website so that people can go check it out and connect with you? Yeah, so my company is called Lean In Therapeutics, and that's the website. So leaninTherapeutics.com. Awesome. And Katie, so. you are in Albuquerque, New Mexico, but you mentioned you do telehealth also. So this is yes. really so. So outside of New Mexico, though, I can only do coaching. Yeah. So I'm only licensed in New Mexico. So in New Mexico, I have all the options. Um, but outside of New Mexico, I only do coaching. That's still a great option for someone to have a, a coach right there that you can meet on your phone or on your computer. That's fantastic to be able to do that. I'm so, yeah. I'm so glad to know you, Katie. And I'm so glad that you're a resource oh. you're opening yourself up to, to so many women and wanting to like make that impact because you've been there. You've been there. You've seen it. I've been there. And, and we know that there's people who are waiting for this. So thank you so much for offering your knowledge and your insight into this. You're topic. very welcome. And then thank you for letting me uh, do this. I think this is really cool. And I think it's important. Yeah, I really look forward to helping people and, and hearing um, and connecting with the women that we get to connect with through this journey, because I know that together, like you were saying, women, we are coming together, we are getting stronger. And this is the work. This is the work that so many women need to do to be able to come together and rise up. And in order for other women to do it, we have to do it for ourselves. Like you said, we have to take care of ourselves and then we can help others. And when we see someone else who's going through this hard stuff, I hope that we all took something from this video at least to say, here, here, hun, like here, here, friend, like here's something that you can do. Um, I heard about this so that we can lift each other up as well yeah. because our strength really does come also from helping other people and what we get there so yeah you. and do the work now let's not take this this pain and and hurt and all this into future generations so let's, yes. let's, uh, let's do it now that's a whole we have to have a whole other conversation about that but just to underline okay. i mean we have to do the work a lot of us are mothers or aunts or, you know, we care about the next generation. Grandmothers. Children are not. We care about the next generation and what we do now. I love that you said, do it now. Let's not wait for our kids to tell us that they had a problem with something. Do it now. 
so that we yeah. make sure we're not passing it on because that generational trauma is real. It is absolutely real. And we don't want our kids to be carrying around these same, these same areas that we are. So thank you for mentioning right. that, Katie. So again, her website is leaninintherapeutics.com and you can go yeah. there and check out all the services that Katie has and um, anything that you need. We love we love supporting you and we want to hear anything that you're looking for. If you're looking to move more in a certain area of healing, we have a ton of knowledge we'd love to share with you and support you on that journey. So thank you so much for checking this out. Again, thank you so much, Katie. And we'll talk again soon for sure. Okay. Thanks, Katie. Yay.